There are some new dupes on the market from Finery and I'm excited because I have all seven of the new Finery fragrances here to share with you. And I thought it'd be fun to rank them. Like, I don't know, let you know my favorite one and my least favorite one. We're gonna start with the least favorite and move our way up. But if you don't know, Finery is a really affordable, usually a dupe brand that you can find at Target. They have body mist, they have perfumes. I just have like the perfumes here. This is actually from their last set of fragrances. So they came out with their initial launch. I wanna say around this time last year. I have a few of those fragrance and I fell in love with Magnetic Candy. It is so good. And then we didn't hear much from them, but now they have seven new fragrances. And like I said, these are super affordable, especially for perfume. So they retail for $33.99, basically $34. The bottles are two fluid ounces. And yeah, let's just get into it. Let's start with my least favorite favorite scent. Okay. I'm sorry to start it off this way, but the Born to Impress is not my fave. I do not like this one. Like I genuinely dislike this one. Not in the way that I think it's just like a terrible scent. It's just definitely not my preference. Not for me. Like this is for someone else. The initial opening of this isn't too bad. It's very floral, very clean, very, I think a little sharp, a light sweetness going on, but I feel like as it dries down, as it wears, it's just really soapy to me. This smells like dryer sheets. This smells like laundry detergent to my nose, okay? Like just way too clean and soapy. I feel like I'm in the laundry aisle at a grocery store. <laughs> I just don't like it. And on my skin, again, the soapiness of it really, really comes out. These fragrances aren't on Fragrantica yet, but some of the notes on this, there's pink rhubarb, damask rose, cypress wood. I'm not getting rhubarb. I'm not getting rose. I'm just getting something like florally and clean. I couldn't pick out a rhubarb. I couldn't pick out a rose, do you? Okay, I really couldn't. Not my favorite. I believe this is a dupe of L'Empertrice. I don't know. I think it means Empress, I wanna say. I don't know. Honestly, not familiar with that scent, so I can't tell you how accurate it is to that one but if it is close I don't think I'm gonna really love that one either personally if you're into clean scents if you're into soapy scents if you're into florals you want something light it does kind of smell like spring don't get me wrong it's just again way way too soapy for me so this is one like I know I will never wear this like I would never choose to wear this on my body moving on to sixth place and I would also say from this perfume and up I genuinely like these fragrances six is here for a reason but I would just say overall like I really liked the lineup of these fragrances I thought that it was a better selection actually of perfumes than I liked from the original launch of the ones they came out with. So number six for me, this one is called Madame. And the moment I sprayed this, I was like, that gives me flower bomb vibes. I don't know, it gives me flower bomb vibes. I'm realizing right now that I did hear someone say, it's like YSL Mom Perry. And I do also get that as well. More than anything, this is kind of that fruity, florally, patchouli thing. You know what I'm saying? Like it definitely has that patchouli, sweet, kind of sexy smell to it. And I do like it. I think it's nice. You guys know I've really been into Flower Bomb lately. So this smelling like that on initial spray, I was like, okay, I can get into that for sure. But I can totally see Mom Perry in this as well. I feel like it's just kind of a generic patchouli, fruit chuli, is that what we call them? It has a nice sweetness to it. It's a little powdery, again, floral, very feminine. I feel like it works well for daytime for like a more rich scent, but also I feel like a good nighttime kind of scent as well. I always associate those like more patchouli heavy female fragrances to be more of like a date night sexy thing. Like that's just where my brain goes. So I overall quite like this. The ding that I have for this is, I just noticed as I wear it, I don't know what it is. It does seem to have almost a chemical kind of smell or I don't know if it's just that I can tell this isn't maybe as high of quality I don't know what it is but as I wear it it kind of takes on something what feels reminiscent of chemically but also could be like a spicy powdery moment that's also just like coming across as chemically I don't know I don't love that about it and the reason I put this at number five is just that although I, I do like this scent I would wear this I already have flower bomb and I actually have Mon Perry as well so I feel like I would always if I was wanting this DNA I would always choose the those over this like I would choose flower bomb every time over this than wearing this but I feel like in store if you can smell this which I don't know if all of them are in store I was able to buy three of these in store and then the rest I had to buy online but if you can smell this in store and make sure you don't get something chemically or something like that I think this would be a really great option again really affordable all right number five on my list this was hard once we got past those two it was really tough to figure out how I would actually rank these but I feel pretty confident in putting mystic figures at number five as the name kind of suggests or hints at, this is a fig fragrance. I'm always intrigued by a fig note, so I was excited for this one. I also feel like fig is having its moment, so I thought this was like a really good choice. And, you know, I was like sitting here like, oh, maybe it's the father figure from Fleur. Like, what is this duping? It's definitely not that. I don't know what this is duping. If you know, 
Tell me, let me know what you think this is a dupe of. You definitely get the fig in here. It's very green, but I also get kind of like a fig sap also. Like, I don't know if I'd call it full on milky, but I also get something a little bit creamy with that quite green note in here. It's very refreshing, very aromatic. I almost pick up on something that leans toward mint even as well. A little peppery, like fresh spicy kind of thing going on. I really like this, very unisex. I believe this also has some aquatic notes in that and I really do smell that also kind of like combining with everything there's a coolness to it the notes in here are Mediterranean fig ocean air and salted sage and I really feel like that's a good description of it it's a little bit musky if you're looking for like a unisex fig scent that's obviously again so affordable this might be one to try out I kind of like that it's a different fig than I have like I'm glad it's not just a father figure dupe just because I have father figures so like I want to try some other stuff but if you're looking for like philosophers or father figure in this I don't get that I don't get philosophers at all from this again those C notes are definitely in here um, that mintiness is also in here and I not that philosophers isn't green because that scent is super green this one almost has like a spicy greenness to it that I don't really pick up on necessarily in philosophers either so the reason this isn't a little bit higher is that pepperiness like again I like it I really do like this fragrance but depending on my mood that's not always what I'm gonna go for and I do find this gets a little bit more soapy on me again as I wear it but not to the point where I wouldn't wear it. I totally would. I think this would be a really good one for spring, summer, hotter weather, vacation, that type of thing. And I love that it leans unisex. I really do like those types of fragrances. All right, we're on to number four. And I feel like all of these are really winners. Like I just think they're solid picks. I mean, a lot of these I have either what they're duping or whatever, but if you're looking for something affordable, something that you don't have to be worried about using up, something that you don't wanna have to worry about like chucking in your bag or getting broken or whatever, I just think it's sometimes nice to have a affordable fragrances you don't need to worry about. Anyway, number four for me is pistachio. Please look at this bottle. It is first off so cute. I actually really like the finery bottles. I mean, they're nothing special or fancy necessarily, but I appreciate that, you know, they still look nice. I like that they're colorful. And I feel like sometimes when you go with a more inexpensive option, you can sacrifice on bottle a lot. And I feel like these are still pretty solid. Like, I think they're cute. <laughs> anyway, you're probably like, okay, tell us about pistachio, please. This does based off a bottle look like it's gonna be a dupe of Kaoli's Yum Pistachio Gelato 33, but it is not. It is pistachio. I would say overall kind of almondy, nutty, that type of thing. But this is a dupe of the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Cream, okay? This is the like original Sol de Janeiro scent. That's what this smells like when it comes to pistachio. It's very almondy, nutty, sweet, kind of creamy. It's a dupe to me of that fragrance. I've been using that uh, body mist actually a lot going to bed lately, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what it is. If you love that scent, you're looking for a fragrance, I really feel like you would be pretty happy with this. I'm honestly surprised more brands haven't tried to dupe that scent. I'll probably talk about this more once we get to other fragrances, but I feel like this scent's been out for forever, and I feel like brands are only now like kind <laughs> of getting on the dupe train for this specific scent, even though it's what people have like raved about for years and years. I know there's been a few here and there in lotion and whatever, but I'm honestly surprised we haven't seen more of these. I feel like Victoria's Secret just came out with like a pretty good dupe of this as well, although I get a lot more salt from that one. Anyway, notes on this. Pistachio milk, fluffy vanilla, tonka bean. Definitely, definitely getting that. It's very sweet, very cozy, kind of rounded fragrance. I get a little bit of creaminess from it, but it's definitely more just like fluffy, powdery. Again, I really, really get that Sol de Janeiro vibe from this. So if you like that, this is a great option, I think. Although a mini of the body mist is a little bit cheaper than the fragrance. So I guess price wise, it's not like the most savings when it comes to this scent, but good nonetheless. All right, we're in the top three. Number three, you guys know. No, it had to be this one. This is the new Rouge, which is a dupe of Baccarat Rouge 540, which you guys know I'm obsessed with and I love. It's one of my favorite scents. Like I've gone through bottles of it, I just love it. Now I have to say, this is a solid dupe. Like I think it's pretty good. I mean, I just love this scent profile. So that's why it's up so high. If you haven't tried the Fleur dupe, if you haven't tried the Sol de Janeiro dupe, if you haven't tried the millions of dupes that are out there okay, of this scent and you want to try fineries, I think it's a solid pick. This has notes of golden saffron, amber resin, and sandalwood and I get that kind of saffron ambery watery scent that I get from Baccarat maybe this isn't quite as airy and also maybe not as sweet in a way like I don't want to say it's exact but I feel like it's pretty dang close again especially for the price difference it's not anything new we've seen the dupes the dupes have been out there for a while now but I can't lie I like this one I think it's nice and I think it's a good dupe of Baccarat I will say I definitely get that latex rubber glove smell from this you know what I'm saying 
interesting. I also get that from Baccarat, but if you really hate that, I feel like this one might not be for you just because I definitely do smell that in here, but Solid Dupe makes my top three. Okay, we're into top two, and I really love both of these. Coming in in that second spot, this is Mysterious Nomad, and I didn't know what to expect with this one at all, but I sprayed it and I was like, ooh, I like it. Like immediately I was like, ooh, I like that. You can definitely smell the citrus on this. There's bergamot in here, and I feel like I especially smell that on my skin. When I first sprayed it, I mostly just got like a woody, musky kind of scent, just like a skin scent, really unisex, clean, but still woody, still kind of grounded, not clean in a soapy way, you know? I think one of the things I love about this one, why it like ranked so high up, is that I love that this scent is so affordable. To me, this smells pretty sophisticated, it smells a little bit more high end. It's not just like a fruity scent or a florally scent or a super sweet scent. I just feel like this scent profile isn't necessarily being done at this price point as often. And traditionally, I don't know, I feel like my scents have been changing a little bit, but I tend to go more this style. So I just love this, very unisex. I believe when I was trying to look this up that this might be a dupe of Byredo's G Water. I'm actually not that familiar with that scent, surprisingly, <laughs> but um, I really love this. I think if you're looking for something woody, musky, a little bit of that citrus in there to brighten it up, I think you're gonna really like this. And again, for the price point, I really enjoyed it. I really love that one. I do not think it smells like a $30 perfume. All right, I took a look in the mirror and I'm like, what is going on? So I hope I look decent throughout this video, but number one, let's talk about it. This is my favorite one. The one that I'm like, yeah, this is good. It's Without a Trace, which is a dupe of Fleur's Missing Person. And to me, you guys, to my nose, these are like I identical, okay? Like uh, the same scent. <laughs> they are like the same scent. As soon as I sprayed this, I knew what it was. As soon as I, it's like unmistakable, like, oh, Fleur Missing Person, okay. I've worn them side by side. I literally smell basically the same thing. I will say right now, I'm weirdly getting almost a vinegar scent. I don't know if that's just my nose at the moment because I have not smelled that at all until this very moment, but I've sprayed these on, like on one hand, on the other hand, wore them. I really can't tell the difference. I feel like it lasts just as well as that one did. The only thing if I had had to pick something out, I would say potentially Missing Person is a little bit more warm, but it's that same kind of florally, musky, warm scent. Like it is Missing Person. Notes on this, Neroli Blossom, Cedarwood, Suede Musk. It's just so good. If you like Missing Person, I feel like you're probably gonna like this. Because again, to my nose, I find them just like so, so similar. A really great dupe for it. And it's about a third of the price of the floor one. So I love that it's obviously so affordable. And I also feel like this is nice because that one went so viral, but I really haven't seen a ton of dupes. Like this dupe feels so much more like timely and like on it than what I was saying about the Sol de Janeiro one. I'm like, this one came out in like what, 2016 this scent? Like a long time ago. But that's my number one from the collection. I've really enjoyed it. And I like Missing Person. So like, I like having that bottle, but if you don't want to pay the prices for a floor Missing Person, I really feel like Without a Trace is a great option. And I didn't talk about Lasting Power. I will say I've noticed this one has lasted really well. It's very musky again. And I, I was so happy happy too. Let me just like interrupt my own self. But I find both of these to be more on that like musky, woody, skin scent side of things. And I'm so happy I like them. Again, they rank one and two because I'm a musk. I hated this one. This was supposedly like a cloud dupe or something like no, I did not like this. It didn't smell like cloud to me. I did not enjoy that. And so I'm happy that the two muskier scents I feel like in this collection, I have really enjoyed because I was getting a little worried I wouldn't maybe like those scents from them. Back to the Lasting Power, I will say I haven't tested these for forever. These just came out. So I don't have tons of data, I feel like, on like how long these really last, but they are $34. I'm not really expecting much from them. I feel like they're pretty easy to touch up, even carry with you because the bottle is only two mil, so it's a little bit smaller. Those are my rankings. Those are my thoughts on the perfect. Fumes. I'd love to know what you guys think down below. If you've tried them, let me know your thoughts. If you have any of the actual perfumes you think they're duping, let me know down below. But overall, I'm super happy with this release. I'm glad they came out with stuff and I'm kind of glad as much as I like wanted them to come out with more. I think it's kind of fun that they've only done like the two drops so far and it gives you time to really enjoy their fragrances and like look forward to something new, but not be like overwhelmed by like fineries a million fragrances, you know? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.